Good afternoon, June the 11th, 2015, and I've come to Chawton Water Park. It's about 6.30 in the evening, and it's been a, a beautiful summer day. I'm still not convinced that summer has arrived yet, um, and specifically because apparently the weather's changing for the worse, um, tomorrow and the day after in particular. But today it's uh, a perfect English summer day. And I've come to Chawton Water Park for a particular reason, which is to check to see if the orchids here have arrived. And they have. I'm not sure they've all come out yet. I thought this was a bit early in the year, actually. Um, but there's uh, a significant number which have come out. So they're purple orchids. I forget the specific name of them. I, I kind of lose patience with specific names, actually, and don't always bother to... Um, sort of make much effort to remember them. That applies... What's that bird over there? I don't know. I wish I, wish I, I, wish I had this knowledge at my fingertips. <laughs> Which contradicts what I was talking about in terms of uh, remembering names. Um, but yeah, I, I am kind of like that as, as, as a person. I... I uh, I'm not... Uh, um, fastidious and, and sort of over concerned about identifying either places by which by which I mean the hills and mountains which I walk or flowers by which I mean flowers wildflowers uh, I mean I, I, I sort of learn both almost by osmosis rather than application by which I mean well I just walk the hills and you know learn that this is Great Gable or Scarfield Pike or Helvellyn or Cribgoch or connect in Wales, you know, the, the, all these places that I go to. And similarly with flowers, I mean, I do have books and I do um, enjoy looking at them and uh, I do like correlating the two things, but uh, I do it sort of gently, not particularly um, energetically. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop uh, going on and on and on because this is the reason why I'm here. These purple, these purple orchids, Now there's there's a lot of growth here which I don't remember from uh, from last year actually and there's lots of brambles just over there which I also don't remember so they're not so sort of obvious they're hidden away but they are here look one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twenty thirty forty you know you know there's quite a considerable number of them so I, I'm orchid hunting and I've uh, well, I, I didn't really hunt for them. They, uh, they were very apparent. There's this particular colony over here, which is where you find most of them at Chawton Water Park. And there are a few of them scattered around in the park as well, which I saw within the few minutes of coming here, actually. There's an interesting um, facet of orchids, which I'll talk about in a moment. I don't understand it entirely, and I'll try and sort of communicate it as best I can. But I'll just show you them first and uh, share with you my little orchid hunting project so you can see them yourself. Purple orchids. I think there is an orchid which is called a purple orchid. Purple spotted. I, I, I can't remember. Anyway, here they are. Now, um, they, they look sort of quite exotic flowers and they're not particularly exotic. Um, they're not actually particularly rare, although I think one or two of them are, are protected species, just to um, qualify that. Um, they're not hugely rare, but they are not, obviously, not so common as, as daffodils, uh, crocuses, um, celandines, campion, you know, all the wildflowers that uh, fill, cover the British countryside. Well, not, not so actually. Um, I think we're seriously depleted in uh, wildflowers, but the, the hedgerows and the good places, you know, some, some of which I know. Now, this um, interesting story about orchids is as follows. Where can I walk? 
All right, let me go up here. Firstly, they, they live in sort of local colonies. They don't spread around like other wildflowers, many other wildflowers. I, I guess it's maybe not entirely unique to orchids, but it's characteristic of orchids. They don't spread around, they stay in sort of local patches, and that's because of the root system. Now, when they germinate, when the seeds germinate, apparently there's a, a curious... Um, I'll use the word symbiosis, but apparently it's not symbiosis. So I'm, I'm not being uh, sort of uh, technically specific, but you, I'm conveying an idea, a concept. Apparently there's a curious kind of symbiosis between orchids and fungus, a particular kind of fungus, and they basically feed on each other. The fungus infiltrates the cells of the orchid seeds to uh, eat them, basically. And uh, the orchid seeds feed on the fungus and apparently that's how it works and apparently it can go sort of either way. The orchid may or may not germinate and sprout and grow depending on, uh, you know, kind of which is the stronger, the fungus or the orchid. That, that's it, you know, it's, it's quite simple. But the complex part of it, which I don't entirely understand, which is apparently the case, is that it's not symbiosis. Symbiosis meaning a sort of mutually productive or possibly antagonistic um, link between two kinds of plant growth. I don't know if symbiosis is ever antagonistic. You see, this is where I don't entirely understand it because I'm not a botanist or a you know, I wouldn't even call myself a naturalist, I'm just a hobbyist, hobbyist uh, enjoyer of, of flowers and birds. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of quirky and, and interesting about orchids, the way they begin their lives. It's in relation to a particular kind of fungus, and uh, it's kind of symbiotic, but apparently, technically, it is not symbiosis, that's, that's what I've read by the fascinating writer Richard Maybe in one of his books, The Cackle of a Magpie. Is there anything else I can show you before I... Uh... What's that going on? Not really. So, yeah, it's, it's now just gone 6.30, Thursday evening, and as you can see, I'm uh, enjoying the, what is, continues to be, even now in the evening, a beautiful summer day. It just always makes me feel so, so good. I'm constantly looking around for flowers, any more flowers. There's buttercups, lots of those about. Specimen A, specimen B, lots of those about, um, little purple one, vetch, I've never found vetch particularly interesting because it's, I don't know, it's kind of not very exciting, it's, it's this, this sort of sprawling little, little flowers in a climbing growth, there's a little bee on a, on the buttercup, bees are nice. I like bees. And they're, they're actually a critical part of the ecosystem as well. Um, and endangered, I think. Uh, apparently there's lots of different types of bee, which I didn't realise, and some of them are actually not much different from others, but they are different sort of species and, I don't know, genus types, whatever it is. They all look pretty much the same, but apparently there's quite a diverse variety of different kinds of bees. And they're essential for the ecosystem because of the, the pollination. And we lose the flowers. We lose the bees. 
there are particular flowers which butterflies like. I read that just recently. Buddhia being one, apparently. We lose the butterflies. We lose the caterpillars. The caterpillars eat certain kinds of growth. That has repercussions. The birds feed on insects. You know, it, it all, it's all interconnected and interrelated. And uh, I think bees are have been identified as a particularly um, important part of, of the sort of ecological chain. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm starting to go on a bit. Really, this is just about the orchids, but here's some lilies. Quite nice flowers. Although, there's quite a lot of those about at Chalkton Water Park. Some purple ones as well. These are, these are yellow, as you can see. So, uh, uh, back, back to the orchid um, colony again, the orchid area. I'll tell you what, I'll just walk up this little path here, just trying to think what sort of video to make and what I can talk about, you know. I like talking about related topics when I walk, which are uh, of interest to me when I walk. I like this little path, I've taken photographs just here, it looks sort of, uh, well, it's just a path, but in certain light, with certain shadows, with certain lighting effects on the flowers, the foliage, the greenery and so forth, it's uh, painterly. So yeah, I, li I like this little path. Where's, where's the sun? Alright, I'm going to... The sun's over there now, so I'm going to swivel around. Lots of buttercups. The point about this little path is you pass through trees uh, right beside the path and there's usually some, some lovely bird song which I'll just conclude with. bird, I can't see it. It's possibly a green finch, I don't know. It's just ten feet away from it, it's just flown off. See, if I try and zoom in on it, it I'll, I'll just disappoint you and me. I'll have a go. My zoom's not uh, actually that good, and the light is falling on my... Um, Green and I can't really see what I'm doing, so no, and it's it's just sort of hopping around, camouflage style. So yeah, forget that. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe a greenfinch. Blackbirds, lovely, lovely blackbird sound. Possibly my favourite song the blackbird and the robin but of the two i would i would probably choose the blackbird out of those two so yeah lots of lots of birds down here lots of chiff chaffs that's there's an oak tree to my left there's a few oak trees around beach i think shorten water park is just over there so you're over the back of it here where it's uh, it's, it's a bit wilder and it's more peaceful and not so many people come here you don't get the joggers and the cyclists and you know the uh, the bulk of the populace around here and so it's I, I like it it's more sort of country like woody like you know And uh, we've had quite a lot of rain recently, and now it's beautifully summery, so the foliage is um, abundant. And the trees as well, the trees have grown quite a lot, quite a lot. You don't usually get these overhanging branches. Presumably at some point they will be cut back, it's not really necessary now. But they want to maintain the, the uh, clear paths. So I don't know when that might be. All right, 
there's Chalkton Water Park over there and I'll just uh, zoom in while you can listen to the blackbirds. And the, uh, the sighing of the wind in the grass and the nettles and the brambles and the trees.